All right, so who's really the king of the beasts? Lion versus tiger. It's a debate that's raged on forever. Yeah. You know, I mean, come on. I, we've all seen those epic battles in movies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But are those just Hollywood hype or is there some truth to it? Yeah. I mean, I bet you've already got your own opinion. Oh, oh I think everybody does. To help us settle this once and for all, we're taking a deep dive into a YouTube video from Wild Sancius. And let me tell you, they make some bold claims. They do. So we're going to break oh. down those claims, see if they hold up against actual science. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. It's very easy to get swept up in the hype. Mm. You know, these videos, they present themselves as very definitive and as having the final answer. And that's where, you know, right. our yeah. critical thinking caps come in handy. Exactly. We've got to separate those facts from the fiction. So the video jumps right into these historical gladiator style fights, you know, oh. talking about the Roman Colosseum, even 20th century staged encounters. And it kind of makes it sound like these events were you know, almost scientific proof of who's tougher. Well, they certainly did occur. You know, the Romans were very known for pitting various animals against each other uh, for entertainment. Right. Uh, and these things did happen, but they're about as far from a controlled experiment as you can get. I mean, I mean, imagine if you're trying to judge who's the best athlete by throwing a bunch of them into a random obstacle course with no training. And some of them might even be injured beforehand. Right. That's essentially what these historical fights were. These animals were in unfamiliar environments. They were stressed. And sometimes they were even forced to fight when they wouldn't naturally. So I don't think you can really draw any reliable conclusions about species dominance from that. Right. It's like judging a swimming competition where some contestants are thrown in with their hands tied. Exactly. Not exactly fair, is it? Mm -hmm. And speaking of unfair, the video keeps using that King of the Jungle title to prop up the lion. Right. But here's a fun fact. Yeah. Lions don't even live in jungles. Yeah. It's like the biggest... This is one of the biggest misconceptions that, uh, you know, uh, sort of trips this whole debate up. Because you've got lions that rule the savanna, the grasslands, wide open spaces. Tigers, on the other hand, are the ones that actually prowl the jungles. <laughs> At least some species do. Right. Uh, you think about the Bengal tiger. They're practically built for those dense environments. So it's more like king of the savannah versus emperor of the jungle. Yeah, exactly. All right, moving on to size. The video does acknowledge that tigers are generally bigger. They even throw out some numbers about Bengal and Siberian tigers. Right. Compared to lions. I mean, those Siberian tigers, yeah. <laughs> over 10 feet long, that's a whole other level of intimidating. No argument there. Tigers do hold the size advantage. You know, we're talking about male Bengal tigers reaching over 7 feet and nearly 500 pounds while their Siberian cousins can exceed 10 feet and tip the scales over 660 pounds. Compared to that, uh, wow. a male lion at 6 to 7 feet, 250 to 450 pounds, seems almost petite. Well, wow. maybe not petite, but definitely outweighed. Okay, so round one on size goes to the tiger. But, but I have a feeling this isn't a simple bigger equals winner situation, yeah. right? Absolutely not. You know, it's like saying the heavyweight boxing champion would automatically win in a mixed martial arts fight. Hmm. There are other factors to consider lions. While potentially lighter, they're incredibly strong and muscular. And don't forget their bite force, which is nothing to sneeze at. Right. Then you've got to factor in agility fighting techniques, even an animal's individual temperament. It's not a clear-cut equation. So there's more to this fight than meets the eye. Now, I did notice the video uses some pretty dramatic language when describing tiger attacks. Words like brutish and massacre get thrown around. Oh, yeah. Almost like they're trying to make tigers sound like supervillains. Well, that's where it gets tricky. You have to try to separate observed facts from the narrator's opinions or interpretations. Oh, okay. Yes, tigers have a stronger bite force than lions. There's scientific data to back that up. Right. But terms like brutish or massacre, those are subjective. They're adding a layer of drama that might not reflect reality. It's a good reminder to always be aware of how information is being presented and what the author's intent might be. It's like reading a sports article where they call one team ruthless and the other underdogs. Exactly. You got to remember there's a human perspective shaping that narrative. Now, this next claim caught my attention. The video says lions are lazy because they sleep like 16 to 20 hours a day. Oh, my goodness. I feel like there's got to be more to that story. Well, you're right to be skeptical. While it is true that lions do clock in some serious sleep time, it's not because they're slackers. It's a direct result of their hunting style. Lions are ambush predators. Huh? They explode with energy in short bursts to chase down prey in open areas. Think of it as a sprint and recover strategy. 
All of that intense activity means they need lots of downtime to recharge. So more like strategic energy conservation than laziness. Exactly. It's about adapting to their environment and hunting style. Now, tigers, on the other hand, they're often stalking prey through dense jungle, which requires a different kind of stamina. They're more like marathon runners, okay. using stealth and patience to get close enough for the takedown. So both have stamina, just in different ways. Expl it's fascinating how their environments shape their whole approach to survival. Huh. Okay, what other lion-tiger myths is this video trying to sell us? Well, the next point they bring up is social structure. The video argues that being social creatures, living in prides, actually makes lions worse fighters because tigers are lone wolves. Used to going solo, mm. but I, I don't know if it's really that simple. So does living in a pride somehow make you a worse fighter? I'm not so sure about that. It's not so straightforward. Prides are undeniably helpful for lions when they're hunting large prey. You know, teamwork makes the dream work, as they say. But when it comes to a one-on-one -on -one fight, it's a different story. There are documented cases of lone lions fending off multiple attackers, proving that they're not slouches in a solo brawl. Talk about it on your own, that's impressive. Yeah. So the video might be oversimplifying things a bit with this whole social versus solo argument. Uh -huh. Speaking of oversimplification, what about the tiger's bite force and brain size? Okay. The video presents these as clear advantages. Yeah, that's true. Tigers do boast a greater bite force and a larger brain-to-body ratio compared to lions. There's solid scientific evidence supporting that. However, the video then tries to use accounts of Roman fights as proof. Uh oh And as we discussed earlier, those historical fights were incredibly unreliable and often exaggerated for entertainment. Ah, so it's back to those gladiator spectacles where the results were more about showmanship than scientific accuracy. Exactly. I'm sensing a pattern here. The video mixes accurate facts with subjective opinions. Yeah. And then throws in some questionable historical evidence to try and sway us. Yeah, you're picking up on the critical thinking skills. Huh. That's precisely what we're aiming for. It's all about analyzing the information carefully, considering multiple perspectives, and not taking everything at face value, especially when it comes to a debate as heated as this one. So after all this back and forth, does the video actually declare a winner? Who gets that King of the Beasts crown? Well, they ultimately give the edge to tigers. They say that they would likely win in a lion versus tiger showdown. But here's the crucial part. They do admit that the outcome would heavily depend on the individual animals involved. Which makes sense. Yeah. Just like you can't say all basketball players are better than all football players. You've got variations in skill experience, yeah. even luck within any group. Yeah. A big experienced lion might just take down a smaller, less seasoned tiger. Absolutely. Individual variation is a huge factor in the animal kingdom. We can talk about general trends and characteristics, but ultimately there's no predicting the outcome of any specific encounter. It's part of what makes nature so fascinating. Well, that's a bit of an anticlimactic ending, but realistic. So we've debunked some myths, highlighted the importance of critical thinking, and learned a ton about these incredible animals. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's say we put aside those biased historical accounts and we create a completely neutral environment. No coliseums, no prodding, just a lion and a tiger facing off. What factors beyond size, strength, stamina could actually swing the fight in one direction or another? What could give one of them a surprise edge? That's a great question. It really makes you think deeper, you know? Yeah. One thing that I think often gets overlooked is experience. Experience, uh-huh. A lion. Hmm. It's constantly battling rivals for territory mating rights. Right. Might have a serious edge over a tiger that's led a more solitary, less combative life. Sure. Think about it. Fighting skills, they need to be honed. Oh, yeah. Just like any other. Absolutely. It's like the difference between a seasoned street fighter and somebody who's only sparred in a controlled gym setting. Right. Like real world experience changes the game. Exactly. Yeah. And taking that idea even further... There's also the element of individual personality or temperament. Oh, sure. Just like humans, some animals are naturally more aggressive, bolder, or have a higher pain tolerance. Right. And those variations could easily tip the scales in a fight. Absolutely. So even within a species, you've got a whole spectrum of personalities. Oh, yeah. From the cautious to the fearless. It's like that saying, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Uh-huh. I like that. And let's not forget about the environment. Right. Even in a neutral setting. Subtle differences in terrain temperature, even the time of day, could influence how an animal performs. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's set the stage for this hypothetical showdown. Yeah. Let's say it's dusk, the temperature is mild, the terrain is relatively flat with a few scattered trees. Okay. 
What kind of environmental advantages could come into play there? Well, in that scenario, the lion's exceptional night vision adapted for those low light conditions mm. might give it an advantage. Mm. They can see clearly when a tiger might be struggling. Okay. On the other hand, if that fight moved into those scattered trees, the tiger's superior agility and climbing ability could become major assets. So it's like a strategic battleground with each animal's strengths and weaknesses playing off the environment. Exactly. This is making me rethink all those nature documentaries I've watched. That's the power of critical thinking. It helps you to engage with these familiar topics on a deeper level, question assumptions, and really appreciate the complexity of the natural world. Yeah. And that's what we've done today. We sure have. We busted the king of the jungle myth exposed the problems with using staged fights as evidence, and highlighted the importance of separating facts from opinions. Absolutely. And we've learned that while size and strength are important things like fighting experience, temperament, and even those environmental conditions can totally change the game in an animal conflict. For sure. I've got to say, this deep dive has been a real eye-opener. Uh-huh. We started with a simple question, who would win? Right. And we ended up with a much richer understanding of lions and tigers and the challenges of interpreting information. It just goes to show that a seemingly simple question can lead to such a fascinating exploration of, you know, scientific concepts and critical thinking. And I bet we've left our listener with plenty to think about, too. Maybe they'll even start spotting those subtle biases in the next nature documentary they watch. I hope so. It's all about empowering ourselves to be informed and discerning, no matter what we're learning about. Well said. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up this episode of The Deep Dive. A huge thank you to our expert for guiding us through this awesome exploration of the lion versus tiger debate. And to our listener, thanks for tuning in. Keep those critical thinking caps on, and we'll catch you next time for another deep dive into a new topic. It's been a real pleasure unpacking this whole thing with you. I mean, it never gets old exploring these age-old questions about the animal kingdom. I totally agree. And you know what really strikes me? Even though we didn't actually crown a champion, right. we gained something way more valuable. Oh, absolutely. I think it's not about declaring a winner. It's about understanding how complex nature is, how much we still don't know, and how crucial it is to approach information with a critical eye. You nailed it. It reminds us that the world isn't just black and white. There's so much nuance and uncertainty. Hmm. Even when we're talking about something as seemingly simple as a fight between two animals. Yeah, and embracing that uncertainty, that willingness to say, we don't know for sure, that's a strength. Right. It opens up the door for more research, more exploration, and a deeper appreciation for all those mysteries out there. So to our listener, if you're ever pondering a question like this, whether it's about animals, science history, whatever it may be, right. remember what we've learned today. Challenge those assumptions. Dig into the evidence, and don't be afraid to embrace the unknown. Well said. And who knows, maybe someday with new technology and a better understanding of animal behavior, yeah. we'll have a more definitive answer to this lion versus tiger debate. But until then, the mystery is all part of the fun. Exactly. It's those unanswered questions that keep us curious, keep us learning, and bring us back for more deep dives. Thanks for joining us on this journey. We'll catch you next time for another fascinating exploration.